Hey everybody, this is your uh, friendly neighborhood nerd. I'm going to be giving you another Call of Duty related video. This one is in regard with special shout outs to Josh Baggins, it's two O's, two G's, and uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry if that's a really stupid intro. So this is a, a video about how to not suck. Josh Baggins is a guy on Reddit who asked for help. He said it's official. He needs help not sucking. So this is a video to provide that help. This guy who's looking, he's done well in previous games since the introduction of map movements and stuff like that, the, the, the jetpacks. He hasn't performed well. He's done poorly by his own standards. So this is going to be a video of teaching him as well as anybody else who needs it the ability to play the game at a higher level, mentally at a higher level, where you know more about the game than your opponent and you'll be able to manipulate not just your character and your gun, but manipulate the map to provide yourself with the KDA you're looking for, with the, the score per minute, the win percentage, whatever you're looking for, this is going to help you get there. First up, we have a little piece, and this is going to be uh, from the COD World League qualifiers. It's a best of three. This is the first match between Complexity and Phase, where they are playing Hardpoint on Fringe. And in this, specifically, the reason I find it relevant is it's a really good example of positioning. And when I talk about positioning, I'm referring to both spawns and map rotations, specifically ones on linear maps, but the spawns and rotations around points and objectives that matter. In TDM, which is obviously it's the most played game mode in Call of Duty, you don't really learn much besides gun skill. You learn that, I would say, pretty well. You can also learn a little bit about map movements and rotating around the enemy team, which it helps. You know, it's older games especially where everything's really straightforward. There's no verticality, per se. It's just, you're here, you've got a gun, they're here, they've got a gun, who saw who first? If lag doesn't interfere, you probably win that gunfight. Now it's not quite the same. The way the map movements work, the way you're able to go from up to down to left and right much, much faster than you used to, I think both concussion-related grenades, like uh, tacticals, as well as knowing general, having general game knowledge is really what propels a player from just some guy with a controller playing this game to someone you can respect when you, you know, you, the games where you go in and you're like, holy shit, look at this guy, look at him, he is on the top of the leaderboard, I want to be that guy. That this is the diff this is the thing that they do that makes them better is stuff like this, and this will get you there with the the current set of skills you have, learning spawns and rotations. What I summarize as positioning is going to be the best thing for you. So I'm going to show you basically it's just one hill that matters. It's not this one. It's the one after it. Uh, to give a little briefing, this game, FaZe dominated this so much. <laughs> they they won this so hard, it's laughable. Uh, complexity didn't rotate well the first two map or first two points, and it's really really disappointing to see them play the way they did. And it's not just that they're getting killed really easily. It's, it, it felt almost like 
phase was laughing during this game because I, I know I would have been. I know in professional league in StarCraft, the players, even Hearthstone, like <laughs> you get to that point and they're just like, wow, this is this is the easiest game of my life. All right, I'll take it. And that's that's what I, I got out of this first uh, few hills. In this, the hill starts here on this left side. This is the view of Clayster as he's running back. We're going to show you about 20 seconds in this one. And we're going to show in particular what to do for the next hill. So the hill is here. The next one is in this house right here. There's like a little window there. You know, the, the thing that goes to the back and out to the right side. That top room with the, the stairway that comes down and goes in here. That's the hill. That's where it's at. That's what matters. That's the hard point. So on that hard point, if this is the next hill, rotating from this one here back to this one is key. The reason that you find phase controlling this side beforehand because in theory for this spawn point another good set of or this hill i should say another good set of spawn points besides back here would be over here to get this long hallway you want this side one because the the two main entrances to this hill are a doorway and a hallway and you will never win gunfights coming down one hallway and one doorway you have to flank you're forced to you can't even go straight forward there's no flank here you're walking into a death trap you have to flank all the way around and kill them off this way which complexity doesn't do they don't or i should say they don't do it well enough they don't win the gunfights which i guess you could say is a bit unfortunate for them it's more unlucky or just that they did get killed off of them rather than you know they're some sort of terrible team or something like that that's not really what it is but the point is these guys complexity are trying to break this hill that phase is already set up on so their goal when spawning out is going to be to push either to split push and um, collapse on the hill and force them as in force phase to spawn on the other side of the map over here or to flush one side win the gunfights and make damn sure that phase moves back so they're spawning here they'll start spawning here and then when they start spawning back here you can push forward a little and they'll spawn on this side somewhere probably and if you can do that it's probably going to go well for you so as we continue you can see ricky and i want to say this is nameless right behind him ricky makes a poor play really he's uh just super going for this guy he's got the blinders on and i think a better play wouldn't have been to shoot there and try and get that but that's a mechanical thing i'm not gonna give him shit for it he trades kills with nameless uh, on zuma and then right after that nameless dies to clayster and you can see where they're spawning where phase dies uh yeah it was zuma right there right zuma dies and still spawns right behind the hill and this, this is the point that I'm getting into. Sorry about that. The point I'm trying to get here isn't that the hard point doesn't matter. It's that the focus you have to have as a player is on the spawn or the other points around the hill. So when you're playing professionally, you have four people on your team or three people on your team that know what they're doing. They know where to go, where to rotate, 
what gunfights they can win individually. In pubs, or even in arena, you don't really have that. You don't know for sure that your team knows how to play. Some people who watch this video might come in not knowing how to play. And this applies not just in hardpoint, domination as well. Your goal in domination necessarily isn't controlling a spawn point, but it's forcing them back into one spawn so that way they can't push out and get something else. So they can't flip their spawn from one side to the other. They're stuck where they are. They're gonna be, all they're going to be able to do is walk out of their spawn into where you are and your gun's already pointed. The other side of that is it also means you get a uh, skill streak. From those skill streaks, you're able to blow them up in their spawn if they're ever getting out you can also use it that way and make sure they don't have a chance that they're just stuck in one spot and they they're gonna tilt <laughs> frankly they are because the only thing that they have a choice on is backing out and leaving or they can walk up and kill everyone by themselves with no help from their team and I, I can tell you from experience that mindset will tilt you off the face of the earth. You will never win a game if that's your MO coming in. If you come into a domination, into a hard point, capture the flag, thinking, my team's so bad that we're going to get stuck in a spawn trap, and they're just going to keep killing us over and over again until we lose or I entirely give up and don't even bother playing. Or the other option is taking a controller and smashing a new wall and your mom comes and yells at you. Knowing the younger people who used to play Call of Duty, that was an option for a long time, but thankfully they've moved on to League of Legends. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't laugh. I play League 2 and God, it's horrible. It's so bad dealing with those same people all over again. But back to the point. It's neither here nor there. I digress. The goal here is for complexity to push in, get this spawn point, and fight for the hill after getting the spawn. In Domination, the same sort of thing applies to you. In any game mode, domination, hardpoint, whatever it might be, your goal isn't going to be to rush that hill because you know your team's going to do it. You don't have to tell your team, hey, assholes, get in the hill. Do something. Get in the hill. Come on. Go, 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 go. You don't have to do that. What you have to do as a player is kill the enemy team while they run to the hill and while your team runs into the hill so if the we'll use this one as an example if the hill is in this building up ahead in the, this one he's in here if that's the hill you want to be somewhere over here somewhere over here in the back even shooting people coming to the hill if you have this spawn if your team happens to have it come up here and just shoot people down here coming across this way or if you're playing domination and you're trying to control B from this point get a vantage point on a good side get over here shoot anyone getting to B so the only chance they have to get to right here is if they go through this building, which your teammates are going to be able to get them because they're shooting through a window rather than shooting someone around a corner on a head glitch, etc. You could do the same thing hopping up into this building here or vice versa. If you're going instead of towards C, doing it towards A, you can do that. Getting in this building, shooting across this way, stuff like that 
that's what you want to do. That's what you want to plan for isn't to blindly run into the hill. It's to play it your way and get the kills you're looking for by manipulating your opponents, making them run where you know they're going to be. Because you know the hard point. You know it's going to be here. So you know both teams are going to fight over this spot. So if you don't fight over that spot, you fight over the area around it. If it's here, if it's here, over on this side, whatever it might be, if that's the area you're fighting for, your team's going to stand in that hard point anyway. You might as well let them. You don't get the points for it. Congratulations, you got a triple kill instead. That's what you're looking for for your KDA anyway. So you might as well just do it and position yourself in a better way. Going on from here, the reason I think this is a good setup is because you can tangibly see what these guys are doing. You saw right here, and this, let me rewind a little bit. The spawns right here for phase are in this back corner in the good spawn so that way they can get into this building. From here, complexity spawning out. They force themselves up through here through this secondary barn. On the other side of this wall, there's a barn back this way, which is right here. They all force themselves through here, killing people on this back spawn, forcing them to spawn on the other side, which means complexity has control of it. So phase is forced off. It leaves attach in a really bad position because he has to kill three to four people by himself. And that pushes the spawn for him even further out. So he spawns on the other side of the map. With 44 seconds left, he can't rotate to the next point already. He has to come back and help to get some points on this one. So complexity takes control. And while they have control, they're doing their best not to get entirely wiped out while FaZe is struggling to find their own spawn, a spawn worth controlling. So they push the hill where complexity didn't rotate themselves around this backside to prevent this side spawn. They stayed in the hill to get some points, which they do need. They are very, very far behind. And it forces them to get pinched. And when I say get pinched, I mean they died off this back part. They had no one in the front. There's one guy in the hill. And that's enable. Or no, this is this this is enable running. That's um crap, who is it? Oh, it was Ricky. Oh, I love that. So it was Ricky in the hill. And as he's in the hill, he gets pinched on by Enable coming through the stairway. You've got one guy on the back here. And he's aiming down, trying to kill everyone coming up this way on their other spawn. So if he gets pinched, if Ricky gets pinched in this hill, coming from the left, the right, and straight in the middle... There's a player there. He can't spawn here. He can't even spawn behind him. So when he does spawn, it's way back on the other side. It, it's a great, great play by FaZe, forcing a spawn out. And it, it, I don't necessarily know, because there's no voice com for it at this point, if that was their plan, if their whole idea was, Okay, we're going to pinch, we're going to do you know whatever to, to get them out of here. They intrinsically knew, as players, if I come this way, while he's going this way, we're, they can't spawn back here by us, so they're going to spawn away. And you can see, to an extent, the spawns they get are almost anchors in of themselves, because you can't not go that way, if you know what I mean. And when they realize, at this point, Complexity realizes, that they don't have a chance of, based on the time left, to come in, 
kill them off this spawn, and come back this way. So they rotate to the next spawn, or to the next hard point. You can see they're doing the same sort of thing, phases, where they're pushing themselves. They've rotated, and you, you notice towards the end, they didn't bother pushing to get this spawn. They stayed with this secondary spawn, which is a primary spawn for the whole map, but I'll get to that whole point later, what you know, primary and secondary spawns are. The whole idea is that the next hill is going to be right in here, and Complexity does a great job of shooting phase off of the hill. And they, I can't give them enough credit. They broke that hill with genuine ability. They, they didn't do it with like map knowledge with you know some sort of great play. They did it because they won those gunfights on a mechanical level. They were the better players right there. They deserve to be able to hold this point because they forced FaZe to spawn in the worst spawn possible, which is way back here. And you'll notice immediately after this happens, they have one player roaming up front, one guy holding each side of the hill, and then one in this back spawn. In doing this, it, it makes it a lot harder for FaZe to get something. Say FaZe comes around, they can pinch. They, I, that's probably their best bet in terms of getting everything, right? Because it, it can force them to spawn somewhere weird. But if they don't, you gotta hope to get something. I, I guess it, this is a really difficult part, and this is part of why they're professional players at this game. Because they're forced into really difficult decisions that they can make on the spot. And when you see up in the front here, they win this gunfight and he spawns in the back corner. You got two guys coming on this side, and then one on the other. I believe that, yeah, that's Clayster. No, no, it's Attach. It's Attach. Attach comes in on this side, and he's pushing the spawn in. So as he pushes this spawn, doing the sort of a pinch, like I was saying, they can come around, right? You've got Phase pushing all sides to force this back spawn here. Because they uh, this this guy here, uh, I can't, I don't see who it is, but he spawned in this back corner and rushed this way while they had two players winning gunfights over here pushing, I think it was Ricky and Parasite, or it might have been Mercs and Parasite off of this corner forcing them away to get this. it's the same spawn flip, but phase doing it to complexity rather than complexity to phase and these are the type of things that you have to be able to do so phase having this area set up this is the spawn they're looking to keep complexity abandons that and they go for the middle they all go to push one side together in hope that their spawn stays back here so they get a it's not the preferred spawn that's much closer but it's a decent second spawn where they can just keep flooding in and challenge the hill rather than just getting destroyed on it. I didn't even really mean to go that far in on this one, on this specific um, set of hills, but uh, that's the point of it. It's, it's about the spawns and where you're going. And this is a, a large part of the map that we have here of Fringe that they're playing on. So this is the thing that I'm talking about where this was the main spawn right here for this. Let me actually grab Epic Pen here. Let's get a different color. Let's go with dark blue. Yeah. So, oh god, that looks terrible. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, we want the pen. We want the pen. That's not good enough here. Holy crap.
let's do black. This is better. So this is this is the spawn they're looking for. And then this is the hill right in here. So you want this spawn. This is the other spawn that's decent. This one's not a miserable spawn because at least you're able to challenge one side rather than the other. This one is kind of like, I, I don't want a spawn back here, but I guess I could technically take it. But anywhere, you could, you could argue anywhere past that is a bad spawn because it, this is hard point. Every second counts. You have 60 seconds where this matters. So you want to force yourself into one of these two spawns and you're willing to deal with this third one. In the circumstances given, that's really the only thing you can do. Push this way in here to force them off of this spawn into the second one where you get this side and you can rush in very easily this way up here and defend this way as well as the the, the stairway here <clears throat> but it sets you up poorly for the next hill because the next one's on this side right in here this is the, the hallway they were in so to some extent you have to rotate if you get this bad spawn up in here and then from here up this way into these spawns to hold this hill and then from here rotate again and I, it's it, it looks kind of circular at this point but the the idea is focusing on these spawns wins in competitive more so than just focusing on the point and it, it comes back to that same sort of thing that same point i really want to hit home if you want good positioning if you want to win a game that you seem to always get killed from behind is to know where they're coming from so if this is domination you've got b here get a is right here and then c is here if your main spawns are one, let me undo that. Let me, uh, let me do this. You got one, and then you got one for spawns, right? To get this point versus this point and you're fighting over this middle one here those are the main spawns like you spawn in when it's your side that's where you come in right that's what we're talking about with what's called a primary spawn primary spawns are something that you can count on more so than anything else to be spawned there when you play a call of duty game the way the spawn system works is if they can give you this spawn, if they, if you're playing domination, capture the flag, whatever, this is the spawn you get. It's going to be on one of these two sides unless someone's blocking it. If someone or something is going to block this, as in you have someone from this side is pushing this way, do do do. Or they've come around here and somehow came all the way this way and around the back to stop you from spawning here. Then you don't really have control A and it's going to flip the spawn onto this side. Where they'll spawn in a secondary spawn, which is probably going to be, my guess is going to be here or here. It could even be here. But it's going to push that spawn around the, where your players are. And where their players aren't is the open area for you to go to. And it, 
I understand it's a little bit confusing, especially in newer maps, newer game modes. It's difficult to see it. So I got a few other examples. Um, let me switch off of this. Let's go to this cursor. That was on fringe. This is, I got uh, slums, standoff, and raid. I'm going to include in the link below to Eager Depot Gaming. Um, I, I just did a Google search looking for these maps, and this is actually a really fantastic site to see the spawns and to get a good idea of it. Back on Black Ops 2, <clears throat> this was, for slums, it was a really, really popular map in the competitive scene. And you have one here. Let me get these. You have the main points are all around here. This was a hard point map. Um, I think GB's used it as a S&D map for a while. And it was also a big CTF map because you have one here, one here, and one was back here. I think it was, was it, no, it was right here. So you have these three as the domination things. So we'll go A, C, B. <clears throat> For each one of these, notice there, there's not really spawns on B. You don't, you don't tend to just spawn here. I know they missed a couple because there's spawns back here and here. I've seen people spawn like right here before. It's very rare, but it is possible. The spawns that matter, so you, know, you spawn into the game here, there's a secondary spawn here and here. With these ones included, if your team is pushed up, let's say, I'll go with this color here. If your team has people pushed up here, where you have a, you know, you got like a guy here, you have a guy on B, or right here, you have a guy in blue house, you know, so there, there, that's four there. You have one more, um, like, in this way, which is, uh, this is dumpsters. There's like three or two yellow dumpsters right here. And then there's like a car here. There's another guy. So your whole team is pushed up in this middle part. If this guy dies and this guy dies, where are they going to spawn? Like It's a little game. Where are they going to spawn? The entire enemy team's back here. It doesn't matter. They haven't flipped yet. The, the two people in the front die. They're going to spawn in probably this spot or this one, depending on where the enemy team is. If the enemy team is, for some reason, pushed up, on this left side, say it's instead of these two, it was this one and this one that died, you don't get this spawn. Because in theory, they have the ability of coming up here. So you're probably going to spawn on this side somewhere here. If it was this guy and this one that died, you're not going to spawn here or over here. It's just not going to happen. You're probably going to spawn on this side or back in the primary spawn. Do you understand? I really hope it comes across properly. That's the way the spawn system works. It's based on you and your team and where you're at and then where the rest are. Where, you know, it's kind of a missing piece type of thing. You have six players. There's six spots for you to be. And if you take away one, the other one where you put him back in has to make sense. It's got to be somewhere in this spot if he died off this side he doesn't just come back right here to take that spot he goes where his team is so the same sort of thing let's clear all that out if you have a team of players that are pushed up into this area and on this team there's one i know that there's a spawn in here there's a guy just waiting in there, one up here, one in this hallway, one underneath this thing, and then, you know, two others that die, we'll say they die up here, 
both of them like bleh bleh both of these guys pass on into another life get respawned where are they going to spawn and it's entirely dependent on your team as well as the enemy team because if the enemy team has people their f furthest back person like the 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 furthest this way if he is right here that spawn's going to flip you are the, the people who die here are going to spawn on this side and they're going to be able to come back if they if they aren't if you know if things stay the same they're probably going to spawn right here just in that back little corner they're going to spawn there they could spawn on this side if the game so desires but it's more than likely going to flip if their team is pushed up if it's not it stays probably in this back and you get to kill them and i say you get to kill them because you have a and b and you're coming for c but you're not pushed up far enough you're just pushed up to a point where you can kill them on spawn so they can't get out of here to get to this other side so let's take another look um you know we'll take a look at oh that, so that's what that is anyway sorry uh, <laughs> i get distracted take a look at standoff same sort of thing you got C B A these are gonna be the domination points it's a line this is what we call a linear map so one two and three when you spawn or when you have a team of players that are coming in they control this side here and they push themselves up here so they've got they're coming from C coming this way to this way and they've got you know somebody here we'll say one other person is back here Let's see three four yeah, we'll just say 4v4 in this this instance. Um, now, and now I'll, I'll throw on the other two. Just to, to make it clear for a 6v6, it's going to be probably one guy pushed up this way. And then maybe one more back here, like in this building somewhere. If you control this way, right, your team is progressing down that way towards a and you kill someone on the enemy team down here do, 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 do. If you kill someone here they're not gonna spawn in this spot right they're probably not even gonna spawn here they're gonna spawn in this corner because you know you have these other ones blocked and there's only one guy here and you got your team is rotating this way so they're going to spawn coming back almost to complete a circle like a just a just a basic type of thing if your team rotates this way the enemy is going to rotate back the other way and it, it the game will force you to rotate by spawning you there because you know if you spawn here you're not going to run back you're going to run forward so they're going to take a your team is going to be able to have control and take C. <clears throat> so it, that's, I guess, the, the premise is that it gives you that option. When you go into maps like Raid, this is about as close to a triangle map as I could find in uh, Black Ops 3 because they're, they're really designed to be three-lane maps. And this one is a three-lane map. There's no way around it. You can't say that it's not, because you have one, you've got two, and you've got three. That's the lanes of this map. It's pretty fucking clear. However, on Domination, they tried to make it a little like a, a triangle map. And when I say a triangle map, what I'm referring to is 
Let's get this nice magenta going. You have C, you've got B, or, uh, hold on, you've got B, and then you've got A. They tried to make this a triangle map, or a, as close as they could for domination. I think it would have been better personally if they move A down here, keep C where it's at, just so it's a little further away to make it more angular, but that gives such a huge benefit for C, because if you notice, again, where the spawns are, these ones back here, doo -doo 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 -doo, all are pretty clear around C, but easy spawns for you to push in towards A, or towards B, I should say, C to B. A, if you move down here, main spawns are gonna be this way, and it's gonna push C back towards this side. Still need the A there. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, to continue, this is about as close as you can get to it because you can, in a triangle map, something like Terminal, which is the other one I've got here, Terminal was much more triangular. It's something that doesn't bode well for competitive. You can't do much with it, but it plays well in terms of public matches. Public matches, a lot of people like the... Uh, hectic nature of that and it's also a game mode or a, a map that is identified by you take a how do I explain this it, on domination instead of it being A push to B and then make them stay at C it's A and C and then B is off on the side here or A and B and you're kind of stretched thin and then you've got C on the other side. It's it's a little bit difficult. I'll show you what I mean here. This, hold on. <laughs> this right here is terminal. Terminal, if you guys remember, B was here. A was on this side, and C was over here. I think, I think this was A, and then this was C, but it might have been the other way. I don't know. Um, Anyway, this is from the Modern Warfare 3 spawns, so don't uh, entirely kill me for this because I know these are a little bit off, I can, I can tell. Anyway, the spawns for this, or the, the domination in general, <clears throat> the easiest way of playing it was taking you know A and B because they were really close to each other and this was a powerful side because you get A, you get B, and you can just throw kill streaks all over C. The same sort of thing applies if you were able to do the opposite on B. If you can hold the high ground up here, force them back into this B spawn, where they can't get up this way, they can't get out. Hold on, that looked terrible. I don't know what I'm thinking going this way, they can't get through this terminal hallway, then they're just stuck back here and you can bomb them, you can you know throw out predator missiles, whatever you wanted to do back at the time to just keep them down in this corner. <clears throat> That's the, the benefit of a three lane or the linear maps versus triangular. Triangular ones like this tend to be confusing because you can't hold it as well. But I, I've kind of digressed very far off the point. Anyway, if you guys made it this far in the video, I really want to thank you. Uh, if you have any other questions or anything, please let me know. I'm going to make more videos somewhat similar to this, uh, where I can go over different things, like console changes, game mode changes, and uh, uh, different adaptations you can make. I want to make sure you guys feel specifically Josh Baggins, since this is what spurred it all. But I want to make sure you guys feel comfortable in these games. And I want to make sure you know going in, there's more you can do than just hoping for the best. Hoping you can get through it and 
you can, you know, hope for like a 2 KDA at best or a 1 KDA, whatever. You can do better than that. You've done it better in the past. The difference is that you didn't keep up with map rotations, map changes, especially ones that got integrated with the change of uh, jetpacks and exosuits and that whole thing. But nonetheless, uh, it's time for me to go. This is actually the second take I've done of this video. As the first one managed to go through the whole thing with my mic off. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. And I will see you in the next video.